Well, Allison, let me tell you, in the last four days covering this, these roads are getting progressively worse. I spoke to neighbors about specifically this tree that we're looking at right here. They say this tree's been through a whole lot. It's been through hurricanes, tropical storms, and this ice storm we just saw, that's what took it down. Cordy, it is going so well. The race is really, it has started. It's been going on for the last five minutes. Take a listen to this. Look at all this color. Look at all these people. This is what drivers are dealing with and have been dealing with for the last 24 hours, which is why the SCDOT and the South Carolina Highway Patrol urge you that if you can stay off the road. And Jack, if you take a look over this flight schedule over here, you'll see there's about seven flights left to go. We just found out from the Horry County Coroner's Office that the remains that were found right near here are human. The trial will most likely get underway in the next 12 to 18 months. I also reached out to Heather's family for comment, but they declined for the time being. Dunn Shortcut Road for now does remain closed and will continue to remain closed as the investigation goes on. This is actually where the first home was burglarized. If you take a look right over here, this is where police say the second home was broken into. We have got the hot dog lady out here. We've got not just seafood, of course, but hot dogs. Tell me, what, what, what are we looking at here? What kind of hot dog is this? Gourmet Nathan's hot dog. Amid so much destruction, it's incredible to know that this building still stands, a building that holds so much significance for the residents of Georgetown. As firefighters battled through the early morning flames Wednesday, there were signs of hope. While seven Front Street buildings burned, the South Carolina Maritime Museum still stands. They fought. I mean, we had every, every pumper and every hose in available pouring water on that on both ends to, to stop it. Georgetown Mayor Jack Scoville says the museum had some smoke and water damage on the second floor, but we're told the museum's sprinkler system worked to protect most of its structure and contents, and firefighters did everything they could, too. A lot of the firefighters did a phenomenal job trying to take out some of the artifacts, and I think we've housed those at the River Room, um, and so they did a really good job. It's something they didn't have to do. Uh, in the line of duty to, to, to remove as many of those artifacts as they could. Artifacts like photographs and large model ships depicting the area's maritime past. Artifacts that Georgetown County Chamber of Commerce CEO Brian Tucker says are a tribute to the character and culture of Georgetown. The city of Georgetown is roughly 300 years old. It has a tremendous spirit, a tremendous culture and work ethic. Uh, and the Maritime Museum captures that. On Front Street today, there is despair and loss, but there is also relief. An historic treasure will remain to teach future generations of the city's Maritime Foundation. Emotionally, folks that live in Georgetown or folks that have ever been to Georgetown, they consider this one of their children. And it really has that strong of an emotional attachment. Still so soon, there's already talk of rebuilding as for the annual wooden boat show, that's just a month away. They say that will still go on. Live in Georgetown, Mark Liverman, WPDE, News Channel 15. They say there's no place like home for the holidays. But for those in the area who don't have a home, they're somewhere pretty close to it. Sweet potatoes, sir. Okay. Merry Christmas. Our bellies are full. We're happy. We're going home. They give us a plate of food to take home, you know, so. It's, just, it's been very wonderful for us today. For 25 years now, the American Red Cross has been providing free hot meals to anyone in need of a holiday pick-me-up, like John Simpson. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. A double amputee suffering from bone marrow cancer. So I don't get out to see many people, you know, so an, an event like this allows me to get out and mingle with the public. In a sea of faces, many of whom Simpson doesn't even know, He's uplifted knowing that today everyone's a friend. Even if somebody didn't speak to me, I wouldn't feel bad about it. But I know deep inside they, they spoke in their mind or it made me good just to speak to them. In our area alone, the Red Cross provides close to 6,000 meals at a number of church sites like this one at St. John's Greek Orthodox Church in Myrtle Beach. One of the most amazing things about an event like this is everybody seems to be connected by two things. Everybody seems to be a family and everyone's connected by a smile. Smiles are one of the few free things still out there and they're contagious.
and you can pass them around and they'll always come back to you. Sarah Lockwood says she and her new extended family will carry the warmth of the holidays long after the leftovers are gone. So it's like a big hug around you and that just, just warms you up because you can take that with you, that memory with you throughout the entire year. In Myrtle Beach, Mark Liverman, WPDE, News Channel 15. Some homeowners in the Wood Creek subdivision are still in shock after this plane crashed right next to their home Saturday afternoon, leaving the three on board dead. Total chaos with people, right? And everyone was just like, like just so in sorrow that some people were really in tears. My wife was in the, in the garage and ran into the house and said, call 911. And I, I was already headed to the door because my kids were playing next door at the house where the crash occurred. The Beechcraft Baron crashed right next to Aaron Burge's front lawn, what some describe as a chaotic scene of large flames and smoke. Power lines were sparking and sending out the blue, you know, transformer pops and things. Uh, and those were kind of coming in, in our direction. Burge says he feared the fire was going to spread to his house. The fuel was running down th along the curb on fire about four to five feet high. But within minutes, firefighters contained the fire. Sunday, investigators here try to find out what led to the crash. We plan to remove the aircraft possibly uh, this afternoon, depending on uh, how much we get done today. National Transportation Safety Board investigator Jay Nealon says the aircraft will be moved to a salvageable facility where the investigation will continue. Now, NTSB officials say there wasn't a black box inside the plane, but they do have other ways of figuring out exactly what went wrong. We were able to retrieve a GPS and an iPad that will be going back to D.C. For, invest for examination. We're all thankful that none of none of our own family members were hurt, but, but three people died, and, and that's definitely in the forefront of our minds. As all involved try to make sense of the crash, they're still wondering how this happened. But those answers from federal officials could take up to a year. In Conway, Mark Liverman, WPDE, News Channel 15.